Well, we are finally ready to get a few more rules of derivatives, and we're going to start with the product rule. So here is theorem 3.5 from OpenStax. And so we're talking about, we've got two differentiable functions, f and g, and they're multiplied together, and it's derivative. Sadly, it's not just each derivative multiplied together. It's the derivative of the first function times the second function, and then the derivative of the second function times the first function. So new, uh, OpenStax has it written here in Leibniz form. That's that first form that we've got right here. And it's also got it written in prime form. I actually like to write it kind of as a combination of the two, where I write d dx of f times g. And I kind of like to take the of x part out of there just to make it a little bit more simple. And the product rule is that we've got the derivative of the first function times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So this is kind of just a little bit of a shorter way to write that rule, but it's the same no matter which one of these three ways we're looking at it. So let's take a quick look at an example of why this actually works with a function that we can take the derivative of using rules we already have. So we already know we can use the power rule, right? We could take this function and use the distributive property to get it not written as x cubed times x squared plus five, but we could distribute that x cubed through and get x to the fifth plus five x to the third, right? Then we can take the derivative with the power rule and we will get five x to the fourth plus 15 x squared. So now let's use the product rule to show that we get the same thing as what we get from when we use the power rule that we've known before. So just as a reminder here, our first function, our f in this case, is going to be that x to the third, and then the g in this case is going to be that x squared plus 5. And really how I know which one's which and where that dividing line is is I read that function out loud. We've got x to the third times. The minute you say times, that tells you, oh, we've already said what the whole first function is. That's x to the third times. Then after that times is our second function, x squared plus 5. So our derivative here, if we use the product rule, so it's the derivative of f times g plus the derivative of g times f. All right. The derivative of f is 3x squared, and then times g, I'll try to use the same colors as I have up above. So g is just our function x squared plus 5, and then plus the derivative of g, which is 2x, and then times f. So let's do the distributive property. Let's get everything kind of simplified here. 15x squared plus 2x to the fourth. Oh, combining like terms, we get 5x to the fourth plus 15x squared. Now, yes, it does seem a little silly to do the product rule here on a function that we, you know, could do the distributive property at the beginning and, you know, then use the power rule. This is not normally one that we would use the product rule on, but it's a nice one to look at because we can see both of those rules and that we get the same derivative no matter which rule we use. And we are going to get to, you know, having sine of x times maybe a polynomial. So functions that we can't really do this distributive property on and end up with, you know, this nice polynomial like we do here. So let's take a look at an example here of when we don't have all of the information about our functions f and g, and we do for sure have to use the product rule. So again, that product rule is if we have the derivative of f times g, it's the derivative of f times g plus the derivative of g times f. So this is asking us about the function h of x which is kind of a combination of 
a regular function, x squared, kind of that we're used to, and then the product of two functions, f and g, which we don't know what those equations are, but we have this whole big table here that gives us information about f and g at particular points and their derivatives at particular points. So the derivative of h is going to be 2x, so the derivative of that x squared, 2x, just like it always is, plus we're going to have the derivative of our second part here. Let me grab a different underline here. Our derivative of our two functions that are being multiplied. So we're going to have f, uh, f prime of x times g of x. So again, derivative of f times g plus the derivative of g times f. So we in particular are being asked about what is the derivative of this function at 5. So we need to plug in 5 for all of x, all of our x's. So we have 2 times 5 plus f prime at 5 times g prime at 5, or g at 5, excuse me, g prime at 5 is right here, times f at 5. So what we need to look at in our table here is this middle column, because that's what... That is when x is 5, and that's going to give us all our outputs for our functions and our derivatives at 5. So this is where all of these values are coming from. Um, we can go ahead and do 2 times 5. That's 10. And then we have f prime at 5. Let's underline here. f prime at 5 is 6. So we'll write that in orange there. Let's grab blue for g of 5. g of 5 is negative 1, and then plus g prime of 5, which is 2, then times f of prime, maybe we'll take this kind of obnoxious green color here, there we go, f of t 5 is 2. So now we just need to do arithmetic to finish this up. We're going to have that h prime of 5 is going to be 10 plus negative 6 plus 4, which all together is going to give us 8.